This is Lori Almond, and I am presenting to you today a teacher's guide, the three principles of universal design in learning. And after this presentation, what we'd like to do is break up into groups. If we are online doing an online session, we will have breakout sessions. And if we are face to face, we'll just physically kind of break out and um, share ways in which you may already be using universal design or ways in which you think you can use it and apply it in your classroom. Whether you are a first year teacher or you have um, you know, 18 plus years of classroom experience like myself, chances are you're going to encounter a group of students with varying learning talents and needs and styles. In my 18 plus years, I have experienced students who learn best through hands-on approaches. I have seen kids, um, you know, achieve mastery using uh, more of an auditory or a multi-sensory approach. And what I found is that universal design allows for us to create learning opportunities that help all of the students and um, helps address this variability in learning. So what this presentation aims to do is to help you understand what UDL is. Um, we're going to share the three principles of universal design, as well as talk about some ways that you may be able to apply it in your classroom. UDL stands for Universal Design for Learning. And again, it allows educators to accommodate their students' natural variability in learning preference. In other words, it's a framework to improve teaching and optimize learning for all people. And it's based off of scientific research and insights on how people learn best. The three key areas of variability are the why. How do we engage our students? How do we get them to um, be motivated in what they're learning? The what. It's that process and um, how, do, how do they process and how do they make meaning from the information and the how, how do they demonstrate understanding. The principles of universal design help us to address those three keys of variability. And the first is that um, we want to provide multiple ways to tap into their interests and passions, giving them choice, making learning relevant to their lives. The second is that we offer um, information in multiple means. We don't just use a textbook. We may partner a textbook with a video or a hands-on learning activity. And then the third principle is that flexibility is key to universal design. Um, in action and expression, it means that kids have multiple ways to interact with material and to demonstrate their knowledge. It may not be that they, you know, are assessed through a traditional test. Maybe they create something, a 3D model or a role play or a video to show you that they understand. Which brings us to how you can apply UDL in your classroom or universal design in your classroom. And there are many ways to do this. And some of these ways you may have already be, be doing in your class. So as far as engagement. Um, when you give kids choice, when you provide interactive activities like games, real life examples, um, um, projects that have them addressing real life problems, um, when you have students assist with their goal creation, when they create goals um, to help them, you know, buy into what they're learning. And then when you're doing activities like um, group work and other classroom activities that you provide cues, whether it be audio or music, for transitioning and, and to demonstrate the routines is a helpful way to keep kids engaged and on task. Representation, when you, um, again, provide different modes of representation to help our auditory, our more visual, our kinesthetic learners, um, you uh, can use videos, sound, and other multimedia resources. You can have a traditional presentation or lecture. Um, charts and graphs and other visuals are helpful, as well as traditional text. And as far as assistive technologies, um, closed captioning for kids who maybe um, are English learners or um, 
who learn best when they are watching videos and multimedia resources while they have closed captioning on. Action and expression, um, instead of just having them take traditional notes with pen and paper, allowing for whiteboards, allowing for typing, allowing for acting out and role play um, to demonstrate their knowledge, creating a poster or a drawing or another visual, using charts and graphs, and then uh, again, Another assistive technology might be the text to speech if children find that is the way that they prefer to express themselves. So those are ways that you can apply and maybe already are applying. And what we'd like to do now is um, allow for some questions and answers, and then we will break up into groups. And if you want more information, please contact me at lac2858 at gmail.com.